Hello, hello, and welcome once again. Jay76NY here. And we are up to episode number 20, I believe, of our playthrough on Suzerain. Uh, this is the douchebag playthrough. We are Anton Rain, the fourth president of Swordland. And uh, we are making a mess of things. So, last episode, we just, uh, I think, got rid of one of the characters in the game that I don't like personally, and uh, we've screwed over in the past, so that may be a good thing. Uh, going forward, it may cause some problems with the Old Guard and Supreme Court, because I think they were uh, under the impression that I was going to just nationalize everything, take over everything that the oligarchs had. Uh, I went the route of compromise uh, because I want to keep Karanti on my side. He's the media mogul. So I took over Walter Tusk and his uh, Burgess Steel. Sent him to the poorhouse and jail. And uh, left uh, Ferranti's uh, organization alone. So let's see what we have to do now going forward. Uh, let's see. Invitation to a movie premiere. We're going to take care of business before pleasure. Uh, what's this? One Rumberg... A high-level agent has escaped from Rumberg and seeks refuge in Swordland. Oh. Whistleblower from the Rumberg Security Bureau has escaped to Swordland by crossing the border and turning himself to authorities in Estord. Agent Chelston Hailstone has promised to reveal extremely sensitive information about the development of weapons program. We can give him refuge and risk antagonizing Rumberg or send him back. There you go. We are... Now, harboring a Rumbergian refugee. Uh, after receiving Agent Chelston Hailstone, we have secretly transferred him to a safe house near Antel. The perimeter is guarded by special forces units to ensure no escape or rescue attempt can be conducted by Rumberg intelligence. The agent is currently being interrogated thoroughly to make sure that the preliminary information provided is accurate. Alrighty, let's see what the news has to say. Swordland accepts whistleblower. So it's no secret now that we have a Rumbergian whistleblower. Who is Chelston Hailstone and what does he know? That's the question of the day, as President Rain has agreed to grant refuge to this rogue national security agent from Rumberg. After escaping to Swordland, Hailstone promised to reveal sensitive government information in exchange for asylum. Whether Rain's decision will be worth the anger and possible retaliation from the Rumberg government remains to be seen. Alright, go to the movies. I had been invited to an exclusive premiere of Alfred Serbuk's new film, The Morning Shall Come. Although I wasn't in much of a movie-going mood, it would have been unpresidential not to attend. Beside which, Peter had worked hard with the producers to make the screening possible during the emergency, albeit with limited attendance and heavy security. With its massive budget and Serbuk's directorial cachet, this drama was set to be a milestone for Swordland's burgering film scene. Personally, though, I was just looking forward to spending some time with my family. They all hate me. Well, maybe Frank doesn't. I don't think Deanna... My wife hates me. We'll just... My wife hates me. <laughs> it was a very hot and sunny day as Serge drove us to the old capital. The film was being screened in the historic... Ugh, cinema, yeah, I'm already falling asleep. Maybe I'll sleep through the movie. Cinema Anglais de Orloy, very first cinema in Swordland. Serge had maxed out the air conditioning to keep the Cadilla comfortable, but that wasn't the only reason I felt a chill in the air. I noticed Frank fidgeting with his tie anxiously. Wrong, Frank. Since when do you care what's happening in my life? Uh, you know I'll support you whether you pass or fail. I've been busy lately, but I always have time for you. Never mind. I turn to Deanna. <laughs> Excited for the movie, sweetie? She nodded happily. Don't worry about me, Papa. We've got the whole country to worry about. Oh, well, that's nice of her. I'm just fine, Deanna. Everything's going to be wonderful from now on, right, Monica? Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> 
Anton, for God's sake. <laughs> Anna looked down. <laughs> yep, my whole family hates me. All she wanted was to cheer you up. If you're going to bring your work stress into this, you shouldn't have taken us along. Next time you'll stay home. <laughs> I was just joking. I can't say that. You were just joking? Frank turned towards us for the first time since he's gotten in the car. Not again. Look what you've done, Deanna. Sirs rolled down the soundproof glass between us. <laughs> Sir, we are about to enter Erloy. We'll be at the cinema in a few minutes. Finally. There's something wrong, sir? My dad's just sick of us, Serge. Ow. Ah, young sir, don't say that. Why would Mr. President get sick of you? He loves you all the more than anything. Well, I am a douchebag. Roll up the glass, Serge. I took a brief look outside as Serge rolled the soundproof glass up again. You could see the many towers of Erloy rising over what was left of the old city walls. Serge knocked on the glass and gestured forward. We were at the main square in Erloy, and the historic Cinema Anglie, Cinema of Angels, was right in front of us. This the place? Yeah. It was an old Baroque-style corner building with walls that looked like marble from a distance. There were exquisite ornaments on each side of every window. Serge pulled the car to the entrance of the building, which was lit by vivid neon stripes in many colors. On the wall next to the entrance, they were painted the words, Stop the Oppression of Blues. Come on, let's get out. Serge opened the doors and we exited onto the red carpet. As the police escorted us inside the cinema, a journalist broke through our security cordon and started running at me. As soon as he yelled, Mr. President, one of the policemen kicked him in the back and forced him down onto the ground. Anton's sword line, huh? Another grabbed me by the suit jacket and quickly ushered me away. Excuse us, Mr. President. He motioned for me and my family to continue along the security corridor. In contrast with the cinema's Baroque-style exterior, the inside was modern and sleek, with bare walls painted in black, red, and white. The film's cast and crew were already in the foyer with glasses of champagne. As they noticed us and our many guards, the mood in the room immediately soured. Damn libs. Hollywood can never be trusted, and it ain't. Whatever. We approached the crowd and were welcomed by the producers and the event organizers. A man walked up to us with quick steps. Stanley Q... I mean, Alfred Serbuk. Adam, Mr. President, it's good to see you here. He gently bowed at Monica and shook our hands. It's an honor to meet you. I'm Alfred Serbuk. Who? <laughs> the, the director of tonight's film. I was told you were a big fan of my work. Frank snorted. I glanced at him and he innocently took a sip of his cola. Very humbling to know that you've been watching and enjoying my movies. If you don't mind me asking, which was one of your favorite? This one may be slightly different than my previous works. Uh. Patronizing. Condescending. All of them were my favorites. Even though I have no clue who you are. You flatter me too much, Mr. President. I myself know they aren't all winners. Come now, just pick one. Okay, fine. Whichever. Man who saved the world. He stared at me for a while as if he was trying to understand if I was joking or not. That's by Mikhail Vargas, Mr. President. He beat my film The Sordish Dream for the top prize at the Benfi Festival last year. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> I told you I didn't know who you were. Frank looked me in the eye and struggled not to laugh. <laughs> Why don't we take our seats? It's about to start. Oh, this is too much. We entered the screening room and lights were dim. The, be <laughs> the film began. It was a period drama set in the 1870s about a sort of soldier who pursues a doomed romance, romance with a widowed, bluish farmer during the conquest of Bergia. 
I wondered briefly whether Serbic was commenting on my own treatment of the Bluetish people, but then he had finished filming long before I became president. As the credits rolled, I made an early exit to use the men's room. Wow, that was a fast film. I was washing my hands when I heard an unmistakable voice behind me. I know where this is going. Dun dun! Tarkin Saul! Hey, <laughs> there he is, the man. What did you think? Tarkin Saul leaned around the corner of the urinal I was using, glanced down, and smirked. Oh, wait, that's not what it says. Uh, he leaned on his cane. He had aged noticeably since the last time I saw him, his appearance far more frail. Yet beneath it all, I could still sense the raw magnetism that had kept him in power for 20 years. I found the plot questionable, but it certainly looks spectacular. What about yourself? Complete and utter drivel. What about yourself? Dangerous pro blutish propaganda. Ought to have been banned. Go with that one. Sentimental problem for the enjoyment of housewives only. And for a period piece, the script contained far too many anachronisms. Dubly. Surprised to see you here, sir. What the hell are you doing here, Mr. Soul? Man's got to get off his island every once in a while, you know. And I, he smiled, but I could see no mirth in his face. And I wanted to check in on how my country had been faring in my absence. Uh. Hmm. Not your country anymore. I can handle Swordland without you, old man. For your presence is appreciated, but I've got everything under control. I'm going to go with that one because Tarkin Soul. I'm a soulist after all, so... Yes, I can see that. He took the court's advice and extended the state of emergency. Very prudent. Anything to keep my enemies at bay. I told Hawker you could be counted on to make the right choice. You spoke with Hawker? Don't be naive, Anton. Do you think I've been spending my retirement tending to my garden? Got to protect my party and my legacy. Hawker and Garazzi understand that. Could have spoken to me about it directly. Next time, perhaps I will. Now, if you'll excuse me, I've got my garden to get back to. I'm a puppet. Puppet. Someone has to keep the weeds from spreading. He slipped past me out the door. The whole security staff and mine were now clustered outside the washroom, forming a buffer against the large crowd that had gathered. That's Tarkin Soul, I heard someone scream as guards closed around him and mine around me. By the time the chaos subsided, I was back in the car with my family, and Soul was long gone. Okay, we got a bunch of stuff to do here. Read the reports first. After the passing of the language bill, a wave of Bluetish protesters have risen and called for its revocation. Governor of Bergia, Felix Braun, reported that the situation has been brought under control and the regional police forces have been tasked with increasing patrols due to the majority of Bluetish towns in Bergia. Blues are never happy about anything. But I keep screwing them over, so can't really blame them. Uh... Ceremonial duty for the day of dissension. Wow. I botched that in my last playthrough. I may uh may actually want to take that one seriously here. Uh, dinner with the family at home? Or briefing on the diplomatic strategy? Got quite a bit to attend to here. Plus news. Let's go to the Lock Haven Times. One film, two very special guests. An exclusive screening of Alfred Serbic's film, Morning Shall Come, made a splash. But eh, blah, 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 Tarkin Soul and Anton Rain were there in the bathroom together. Rain and Soul meet at Serbic screening. New law and education in Sordish language, that's the Unified Language Act. Uh, Kizero Kibner, Kibner, who complained heavily, campaigned heavily for the bill, also sought to express his gratitude for the confirmation of the new laws saying it contained much vital new rules that will unify 
and protect the integrity of the Swordish language and identity. The new law enforces that the education, educational institutions of Swordland will teach all classes except for foreign language classes, classes in Swordish. New language bill a mile, milestone for integration. Ludish separatism is about to become a thing of the past. President Rain has wisely approved a new law that will enforce the teaching of Swordish language in schools and universities. Uh, okay. No more will Ludish and Agno Swordish people be allowed to live in this country without speaking its language. No. Washroom Summit. <laughs> what are Rain and Soul hiding? The screening of Alfred Subrick's blah 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 overblown sob story. They didn't like it. The morning shall come. President Anton Rain and former President Tark and Soul were seen exiting the men's room together. On the licit as that not out of the question. It is far more likely the two veteran politicians were making backroom deals. We actually didn't do anything. I didn't even know he was there. And Rain signs the racist bill. Not even going to bother reading that. I'll leave it there for a second. You can pause. Okay, moving on. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of time. Uh, <laughs> thousands of Bluetooth students dropped out of their schools in protests after teachers were forbidden to use the Bluetooth language in teaching. Lewis teacher who did not abide by the new law was reportedly arrested by the regional police forces of Berget for teaching math in Bluetish. Should have known better. All right. Let's get to write down because there's an order you have to do. I don't want to botch this. I'm actually going to take this kind of seriously. <clears throat> Morning haze surrounded the city of Dyer as the sun dawned on the day of dissension. The holiest day of the Nerity religion celebrated the first message received from God by Saint Dast and his thirty disciples. As per tradition, the celebration was held inside the arch sanctuary of Dasternity, closed to public eye. This year, however, for the first time, it was going to be televised. Do I want to take it seriously? And surprisingly, very surprisingly, in my last playthrough, well, not surprisingly that I screwed it up. Surprisingly, it had a heavy weight on the uh, on the story. So that was Lucian's idea, as he saw it granting the people a rare glimpse of the grand ceremony and showing them how seriously their president took his holy event would ease the tensions that lingered following my decree to ban the Workers' Party of Bludia. As we arrived at the largest cathedral in Swordland, a huge crowd gathered around our convoy as the car pulled up to the entrance. This will work out well. Trust me, sir. Of course, that's only if the prayer is done completely correctly. Please don't forget the order. First, you will need to grasp the Holy Scepter with your left hand. Yes, I am writing this. Then touch the altar with your right hand. Kneel before the archpriest and wait for him to put the sword on your shoulder. Then touch the sword with the hand you touch the altar with. See my right hand. Hand the scepter over to the archpriest. and receive the sword before passing it on to the disciple. There's not much more. Watch the uh, coronation of the new king of Inc uh, Great Britain yesterday. Pretty impressive. Makes the uh, presidential inauguration look like a uh, Tailgating party at the Buffalo Bills football games. Uh, it's just a ceremony, whatever. Yeah, sure. I don't understand a word you just said. 
<laughs> Hoping we aren't placing a target on our backs by coming here. Don't worry, sir. I have taken required precautions. You will have to go first. I will come inside later and we will meet up after your part is done. Good luck, sir. You know, I exited the car and was greeted by a chorus of boos. Some people in the crowd began raising signs and chanting in protest of my ban. I ducked my head as the guards quickly ushered me to the grand gates. The arch sanctuary was a sight to see. With its towering visage, it cast a shadow over a large portion of the city. I had to crane my neck to see the narrow spires at the top. Just standing next to it made me feel awe and dread in equal measures. As I reached the gates, I spotted my welcoming committee. The archpriest and his disciples were waiting for my arrival. At my approach, they all bowed their heads in respect. The archpriest came, gave me an infectious smile as he straightened back up. Tall and handsome in his mid-fifties, he was one of the youngest and most popular archpriests in history. Some of his more avid followers even likened him to Saint Dast. Sketchy. Mr. President, praise God. It is a blessing to see you on our most holy day again. Welcome, welcome. Nice to be in dire again, I'll say his name. The crowd was still booing angrily. The archpriest turned and raised both of his hands, and everybody immediately fell silent. O oh, great people of Swordland, once again we are gathered here to honor the day of dissension. I am indescribably happy to be sharing this moment with you as well as every blue and sword, old and young. Tuning in to their televisions to watch this holy... Um, every blued, huh? In these times of turmoil, we must unite. By the grace of God, the president is here today to show you he will unite our great country. Unless you're blutish, then you can fuck it. Stay far from evil, O sons and daughters, for evil hides itself under many disguises. Disguises such as blasphemy, apostasy, and even alcohol. Be good, my children. Praise God. Praise Swordland. He smiled beautifully as... Beautifully, as the crowd burst into rapturous applause. After it subsided, he turned to me. Shall we move inside for your confession? Get this over with. Most excellent! Before we went in, the archpriest looked at the crowd and pointed at one man. I turned and followed his fingers with my eyes. It was a man holding a picket sign that said, Stop the Religious Disharmony Bill. As you can see, every man has his faults. So does every president. So does every archpriest, it seems. But of course, I am but a simple man and a mere servant of God. He led me through the main hall, which had a stratospheric ceiling and nourished icons lining the walls. We walked up a creaking spiral staircase to the top floor and finally arrived in front of the confessional chamber. He gestured towards a chair in the dark room. The room smelled of old mahogany and scented candles. The archpriest proceeded to light each and every one of the candles, one for each virtue and vice. I will be right with you. He left the room. A minute later, I heard the sound of a sliding window right next to me. It spoke with a very soft voice. Anton Rain, speak. Speak and confess now before the one God, and he may re repent your sins on the most holy day of dissension. I confess I was involved in bribery. I confess that I've been a bad husband. I confess that I'm not what I... Not sure what I'm doing for Swordland is enough. I confess nothing. I have not sinned. I'll go with them. I'm a bad husband. Family is a cornerstone of society. Under the watchful eyes of the God, men are required to protect their wives and children. But God creates us in co as complex creatures. At times, conflict rises among us. Tell me, what are your sins? It's between me and God. I've been neglecting my family due to the stress of my position. The tragedy of neglect happens to all working men that feed his family. Rejoice. God is kind in the matters of family. Anything else you would like to confess? That's all for today. Thank you. Have a good one. Before God, I thank you for sharing. You are now forgiven before God, Anton Rain. May you never sin again. The sliding window closed and the archpriest entered the confessional chamber. For the confession to end, you must extinguish the candles representing each one of your virtues and vices. With this, the once burning sins connecting you are now smoke and nothing else. 
Well done, Mr. President. Let's move on to my quarters before the ceremony. Uh-oh. He led me through the thousand-year-old corridors to his office. The smell of dust and old tomes was in the air along with the scent of burning incense being prepared for the ceremony. Well then, please have a seat. The wooden chair next to him looked like it might turn to dust at a single touch. I sat down gingerly. It was surprisingly sturdy. Are you ready for the ceremony? Get on with it. Patience is a virtue, Mr. President. He leaned back in his chair comfortably. I want to give you something, a gift to celebrate this special day. He pulled out a large rectangular box from his desk drawer. The box was lined with gold and expensive gemstones. Beautiful sight, isn't it? He opened the box and showed me what was inside. It was a dagger. The handle looked like it was made of pure gold and had a very large gem at the end. On the blade, the words were inscribed, Vector and Sis Da, Victory is Close. On the other side, another set of words, King Egmund. This dagger belonged to King Egmund. It is a very important artifact of the Kingdom of Swordland era. It is now yours, Mr. President. Uh, thanks. I'll take it. Think of the past and think of who you are. Traditions are what brought us to this point. Well then, it should be right about time. Yeah. A couple of knocks were heard on the door and a young boy came in. He bowed before the archpriest, then me, before letting us know that the ceremony was about to begin. We made our way downstairs where the ceremony was already in progress. The chair, the choir, wow, sang angelically as the archpriest took his seat beside the altar, making up text as I go. When they finished their hymn, an expected silence fell over the room. It was time for my part. Good thing I wrote it down. I started my walk, bowed, and approached the altar. Uh, Holy Scepter, left hand. And touched the altar with him. No. Kneel. The archpriest laid the sword on my shoulder. Touch the sword with my right hand. and give the scepter to the archpriest. The archpriest handed me the sword. And I got to pass that to a disciple. I got up and proceeded to my des designated spot next to Lucian. He leaned over and whispered in my ear. Compared to last year, that went surprisingly well. How do you know how it did last year? Uh... I wonder if he's referring to my other playthrough. I wonder if these guys know. My eyes met the archpriest and he very nodded. Very... First step to Galcana. Steam achievement. Fantastic. Good for me. <clears throat> Ceremony went on for another hour and a half. Finally, the noon bells chimed, making the end of the cathedral service. We left the cathedral to greet the waiting crowd. As I walked outside, I heard scattered boos. A man in a shirt bearing the colors of the bluish flag shouted that I'd only done the ceremony for show. True. Lucian hadn't been exactly right about my presence easing tensions, it seemed. We should go before things get heated. We entered our cars and drove back to our suites in Dyer. Here we go. Got that out of the way. Woo! That was rough. President attends the day of dissension. Yes, we did. All about unity. Uh, let's do briefing for the diplomatic strategy next. The door to the White Room, like everywhere else in the Maroon Palace's main nerve center, were painted white. Took a deep breath before pushing them open. Time for yet another meeting. At least this time, it was with people who liked me. I think he likes me very much, or maybe he's just complacent because he's old. Doesn't really care. Uh, the attendees rose from their seats and greeted me. Joseph nodded. He and Lucian sat down while David remained standing. Now that you're here, let's talk about our diplomatic strategy. Mr. President, if I may, I would like to provide you with a short overview of where we are right now. Get it? Although we did not make a trade deal with Agnolia, we succeeded in making one with Whalen, which means we have increased our presence in the region. 
These deals were important pieces of leverage and significant first steps into the global arena. We must now look towards the future. What do you mean by look towards the future? Sat down, pulled out a few papers, and started going through them. Wayland and Agnolio were practice runs. We must begin improving our relationships with greater nations. We need to elevate our international standing, especially with the threat of Rumberg looming. Thanks to your wise investment, Swordland's army is on its way to becoming a force to be reckoned with. Whether it be Rumberg or anyone else, we can handle outside threats just fine. We don't need to beg for help from anyone. I'm not going to let Swordland look weak. Military perspective is important, but these deals are about more than just gaining allies. We also need to consider the benefit to our economy such deals will provide. That's a good point. Especially when we are still struggling to end this recession. At the start of our term, I had a comprehensive trade deal plan laid out. Following the visits to Wayland and Agnolio, we were to pursue potential trade deals with two greater nations. Bogsland is one of them, or at least was. <coughs> Unfortunately, a trade deal with them no longer seems possible. I can't discuss Volgsland without bringing up your decree to embargo United Cantana. Uh, hmm. Blacklisting the superpower leading the CSP was naturally going to anger one of the Alliance's most important members. Don't seem satisfied with my decision. That's because I'm not. Wow, that was up front of him. As we stand right now, any kind of deal with Vogslin is simply out of the question. Moving on to Lesbia. Who's my original one I was going to... Vogslin. Whoops. Ha. <laughs> Our southern neighbor is one of the wealthiest countries in eastern Macopia. They are a republic. Trade deal with them would be very beneficial, not just for our economy, but also for our region, regional and international presence. Not to mention that they are in the Arcadian sphere. Why would I not trust Lesbia? Trade deal with them would open many doors. True. A country as influential as Lesbia could help elevate our economy. That's it for the overview. As to the actual contents of the trade deal, Lucian? Lucian pulled out his notebook. Looking at my stats here, we now have a small tungsten surplus, which makes an excellent resource for trade. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Need to know your decision before we proceed. What should we do? Begin negotiations with Lesbia. Make some money. That's all I had for the day. Thank you for coming. Thank you, gentlemen. Joseph saluted as we left the White Room, wondering why he was even there in the first place. All right. New hospital built. Zirin has fi just finished construction on its new state-of-the-art hospital expected to accommodate up to 1,000 patients. Its facility was built as part of the new initiative to improve healthcare access in Sortland's rural areas, thanks to me. Wayland Trade Report. Trade deal struck with Wayland continues to bear fruit as Bergia sees an upward trend in agricultural exports. Manufacturing industries are also celebrating the decreased production costs that have resulted from an uptick in important importation of Wesic oil. Hey. Session hits workers. As in the rest of Swordland, workers in Gelsard are bearing the brunt of the recession. The manufacturing sector has been hit particularly hard as a record number of factory workers filed for unemployment. Sucks to be them. And nothing else. Uh, isolated polio cases seen in Bergia. Uh-oh. Good thing we got a new hospital there. Several villages in Bergia have been safely placed under quarantine after a few polio cases were diagnosed in the region. The outbreak is largely confined to Wayland, and there is little chance of further infection occurring in Swordland. Even if there was the disease's most notorious symptom, paralysis, only seen in a minute percentage of cases. Right. 
polio cases explode in Berge. Rain will visit Lesbia for trade deal. President Rain is scheduled to visit to Lesbia in order to discuss a possible trade deal with Prime Minister Patricio Alvarez. Exactly what would be on the table is unclear, although insiders speculate Rain could be preparing to offer swordish fish, wheat, coal, or tungsten in exchange for les lesbian capital. An alliance between the two countries is not also out of the question. What is clear is that this visit will bring Swordland closer to alignment with Arcasia. All right, let's go to dinner with the family. Oh, wait, we got more. Currency loses value against Arcasian Lira. Financial reports show that the Swordish Ren has steadily been slipping against the Arcasian Lira, though the exchange rate has not yet approached an all-time low during the Alfonso administration. Now it's time for dinner with the family. I arrived home from work, hung up my jacket, and put my briefcase in the hall. I waited my usual welcome from Deanna before realizing she was out at one of her art classes. Frank was still at school, and Monica, it's been a long time since she's come to the door to greet me, from the living room, I heard a muffled sob. I entered to find Monica sitting on the sofa, a letter in her hands and a look of despair on her face. Monica pointedly moved a few inches away from me, then handed me the letter. From the Department of Education, Frank's uni university exam results are in. Uh-oh. He must have made us proud. That's why you're in tears. He failed, didn't he? Just read the letter. I looked at the page below Frank's name and address. His score was written. 435 points out of a total of 1,000, so he failed big time. At the bottom of the letter, the word failed was stamped in red. All those years of effort, all those private lessons, all down the drain. He brought this on himself. This isn't just about Frank, you know. Him failing will reflect badly on you, on us. He did this to get back at you, you know. Maybe if you'd been there for him more often. I heard a key turning in the front door. Frank stomped in and was about to go straight upstairs when he noticed us both in the living room. Hi, Mom. What's going on? Let's wait for Monica. Your exam results arrived today. Frank sat down and Monica handed him the letter. Oh, shit. <laughs> You're a disappointment to this family, Frank. Think I? You think I give a fuck? There's a 13-month-old sitting behind me. I couldn't exactly say that out loud. It's all about you, isn't it? You don't care that I bombed the test. You just care about how it makes you look. Well, so does your mother. So my image doesn't matter. This is your future. How dare you speak to your parents that way? You're right. The president of Swordland cannot have a failure for a son. This is going off the deep end. Monica put her hand on her, his shoulder. She glared at me. I know it's been a rough time, Frank, but you really should have studied harder. I know. What am I supposed to do now? Uh, well, there's always military school, but you're the president's son. You still have options. Go to military school, of course. It's the only place that will have you. Anton, isn't there anything you can do? If Alfonso could get his dimwit son into Kings Hill University, I'm sure Holsword State would have room for a bright boy like Frank, but Frank's an idiot. Not going to take life lessons from Alfonso. I am respected alumnus, it's true. It'd be nice to have him closer to home. Uh, I'll go with that one. You're going to abuse your power to get me into school. I want it to be as far away from this family as possible. Uh, it's true you could study abroad. No, I won't influence your life. You've got to live with what you've done. There you go. I understand principles are important, but Anton, which is more important? Your principles or your son's future? My principles, of source. Of course. I knew it. It's so important to you, I'll go to goddamn military school. Won't be around to disgrace you any further. Good. Time to learn some discipline. 
Frank ran upstairs to his room. I'm going upstairs after him. Loot yourself. Monica went upstairs after Frank, and I started reading documents before dinner. Well, that went well. Court strikes down Urson versus Swordland. Chief Justice Hawker of the Supreme Court made an announcement after the majority of justices voted against the violation of constitutional rights for blue citizens as proposed by Urson. Landmark case, which was politically charged with the support of WBP and even PFJP establishment, caused a major disagreement between the Ministry of Justice and the Supreme Court. Criticisms were handed over to the Minister of Justice, Nia Morgana, who filed a concurrence. Okay. Ashrev Anniversary. Uh... Who is this, Lockhaven Times? Perhaps it's time for the administration to let bygones be bygones and take a step back to display the unity of Swordland to the people who need it. Enough with the bluish protest. Once again, the bluish protests in the country have claimed its toll. This time, the toll was an injured child. On his way home from school, 13-year-old DK unknowingly entered the protest garage and it got stampeded. Justice failed once again. As of rights cases struck down any future precedent for an argument to be made against the constitutional rights violations that individuals through legislative action. All right, well, it is what it is. What's next? Uh, I think we're going to wait till the next episode to get that one in. Uh, we'll find out how all this goes uh, once we come back. Anyway, if you like the episode, hit the like button. If you want to follow along through this douchebag playthrough with me, as I had on rain, hit the subscribe. <coughs> Leave your thoughts in the comments below, and we'll see you for the next episode. J76NY saying thank you very much for watching, and have yourself a very good day.